before we opened our doors, all of us, all of us were yeah. like, no one's coming. No one's ever going to come in. No one's ever going to come in these doors. We're going to have to ramp up wholesale. Yeah. We're going to have to figure this out. We're only going to do wholesale. That was literally all of our thoughts. Like we had a million and one ideas of how to make money with not a single person walking in the door. And then we opened and everyone came. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, you get my conversations with peak performing thought leaders, creatives, and entrepreneurs. Every week, I bring you the latest scoop on what these incredible people do to succeed and how you can get their secrets and do it too. Whether we're talking about best practices for spending time creating, how to work the business part of your business, or how to keep in that innovative mindset so you can keep living and performing, you'll get practical and wise information to use in your work and in your life. And now, let's get on with the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I am thrilled to have you here. I'm also thrilled to have Christina Verna and Amanda Fox of Satan Rising, the cafe that has me completely obsessed in Brooklyn, New York. And I want to talk to you about this because they are innovating the restaurant industry, and I'm super excited to get their take on what it is they're trying to do. The cafe is a product of Pisces Rising Vegan and Satan's Helper, and they're meeting and combining forces. They've had pop-ups around the city for years, and now they finally have a brick and mortar location in Brooklyn, right near my house, which is fabulous. We're going to chat today about how these women are working on changing what is expected in the restaurant industry and how we treat ourselves and the beings we share the planet with. I'm so excited to welcome you, Christina and Amanda. Welcome. Thank Hi you. Guys. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> this is so much fun. I'm so excited to have you, especially since I'm I'm at the cafe quite often and I love what you're doing. I would love it if you would tell me a little bit about what got the cafe started how did it begin so it really started with like lars and amanda and just kind of both being at pop-ups and you know you see each other a lot when you're like working the pop-ups and you know when you have dead time you kind of walk around and they connected amanda and lars and became friends and then i was also helping lars out at pop-ups and amanda's wife was also helping her at pop-ups, Cheyenne. And through that, like, you know, seeing each other, both didn't really have a stable place to be working. And so they went in together and started a commercial kitchen spot that they could both work out of. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, through that, just got closer and closer, hanging out at the spot. I'd be there helping out sometimes, you know. And through that, it just, it became very obvious that people really wanted to come inside <laughs> everybody always wanted to come inside so I think the cafe was just a natural progression from that we both realized you know if we team up they're doing savory someone's doing sweet we've got it all covered yeah you know it's just like uh it was just natural it just kind of was like okay where are we going with this how can we because none of it, it wasn't sustainable really like the commercial kitchen space was like you know everyone was kind of just getting by and we realized if we let people in we might be able to like be a little more sustainable and we also all came from restaurant backgrounds and we're kind of all tired of what was going on in our personal lives with places we were working so I would love to to explore that a little bit. What was what is different from what the restaurant industry was like for you when you were working in these other places to what you are doing with the cafe now with Satan Rising? So I think uh, the the biggest part of the restaurants that we've all come from is. Uh, because we love our jobs so much, because we all love food so much, it was very easy for us to feel taken advantage of. Mm. And we also felt that we were always controlled by some other part of the business that we weren't a part of. 
Mm-hmm. So it was like decisions were being made for us, what kind of food we were making, you know, how many hours we worked, you know, if and when we could just say like, hey, I'm really tired today. I, I can't, I can't do my fullest. Yeah. The restaurant industry really puts more emphasis on the bottom dollar than your own physical and mental health. Yeah, for sure. And we were both, I mean, Christina and I especially were both working different management positions. And from that, it's very difficult to work in an environment with other human beings and somehow have power over them Mm -hmm. and therefore have to do things like control other people and what they do with their work. Yeah. You know, telling telling someone to do something that you don't even want to be telling them to do that even you personally are like, I, I don't want to be yelling at you right now. Like, <laughs> this is horrible. Like, I don't want to, I'm not personally angry at you, but I'm being told I have to be angry at you. Yeah. And it changes the relationships you're able to have with the people you work with and the people that you're trying to do something mm-hmm. as basic as, as feed people with. So I, I completely understand that. Exactly. So I, I'm fascinated by this idea that you are that you are all equal in the ownership of the cafe, that you have decided mm-hmm. that nobody is there's that there, there, there doesn't seem to be a hierarchy. Is that true? How does that work? Yeah, I just we all kind of went into it with that idea. There's kind of never a thought of you know what if we all owned a cafe with employees yeah (laughs) you know it was it was always from the jump you know let's just talk about everything and let's just come to an idea of what we want to do um everything is talked about in the group chat you know from the paint color to you know what we're making that day it's all it's all communal and we all pitch in and we all do separate things we all have like the one thing that we do but most of the time it's like how can we help each other what are we doing today yeah what's the problem of the day let's fix it yeah like let's all I mean, even I mean even at the commercial kitchen spot like while we were doing separate things it was still like oh do you need anything do you need help with something mm-hmm. like and I just feel like the cafe was the it's, it was like expanding on that. Exactly. You know, of being like, okay, no, we really are becoming one yeah. entity. Yeah. There's that <laughs> joke where like bosses are like, oh, this company is a family and whatever. But with ours, because we are all equal, that whole idea of becoming a family is very real because no one has power over each other. Yeah. We're all equal. We're all in the family together. We're all in it together. Yeah, a lot of people use that family dynamic in like an emotionally manipulative way in the restaurant industry of like, Mm. you know, you're part of the family here. Like, don't you care about your family? Yeah. You know, wouldn't you do that for your family? And it's like, no, you're, this is my job. (laughs) (laughs) I am here because this is my job and I really need to pay rent. And what happens to you happens to you. you Right. And it's, it sounds like this is a different, it's a different paradigm. It's a different way of doing things, which I adore. Uh, I I do. It's so interesting to me because one of the things that, that I have noticed, because I follow you on Instagram and we're going to talk about your social media for sure, because, because that's, that's the way I stay in touch with when you're going to be open, for example. And it's so different. You, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, you've taken a, a, a different stance than I think a lot of other restaurants in that when you're tired or when you're when you need a break, like after Thanksgiving, for example, you took a break, you took a break for a few days, and you were like, we'll be back. And that's how I found out, right, that that you that through your Instagram feed, that you weren't going to be there for a little bit. And it sounds different than other restaurants, because most restaurants go, these are our hours, this is when we're going to be open. How did you arrive at the decision to say, okay, uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently? What happened to make that be a priority for you? And how's it working? So I think when we first started, I remember Lars and I, we had a meeting with our landlord and we were telling him, we were like, okay, I think we're going to be open five days a week, 
we'll, you know, be able to prep for two days, you know, get some time off in between there. We'll be open from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. It's going to be great. And then we started doing this idea in the very beginning, our first week, we, we held those hours and we realized this is a lot of food for four people to make. (laughs) This is a lot of cleaning for four people. And we just realized instead of running ourselves into the ground, we could, you know, make it more sustainable, just like opening the cafe, make it more sustainable. So we're able to create better quality food and, you know, stay open our full hours each day because at the beginning we were just selling at a food constantly because we were open for so long. So by reducing our hours, we were able to meet the demands of the customers that were coming in and really get them the food. So that that just ended up having to be our hours. Yeah. And I just feel like it, you know, we all came from places where there were days that we had to work where like we physically could not work, you Mm -hmm. know, where it was like either you work, you lose your job. Mm Yeah. End of story, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think we definitely all went into the cafe with the flexible mindset of like, you know, things are going to change. Nothing is going to be set in stone. And I think, I think customers sometimes have a really hard time understanding that in that they want everything to be available all the time to them. Mm -hmm. And I think Mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing we're trying to push against is that like, it's okay that not everything is available to you all the time. Yeah. Because if, that was the case because, you know, in other restaurants, when everything is available to you all the time, what you don't realize is the reason it is, is because people are just constantly working. Like people are just nonstop working to make that happen. And we're just, we're just four ladies who are trying to survive. (laughs) And I mean, that being said, we still all work at least 12 hours a day. So it's like, this is, this is what we got 12 hours a day. I hope you like it (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) because that's what we got. (laughs) And I mean, even like, we're still constantly changing our schedule. Yeah. You know, we're still, you know, changing things in the cafe to make it more and more sustainable for us to be working. Like cutting out custom cakes was like, Lars was working 16, 18 hours a day to make custom cakes and pastries happen. And I, I think people didn't understand that. And are, you know, get kind of cranky, a little cranky about it. But at the end of the day, you know. Because it's our place. It's, it's our, our rules. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Ah, that's lovely. It's it's our place. It's our rules. But it, but it also, it makes, it makes sense. All right. There's only four of you. You're working your butts off. And yet the cafe is like I don't even know how to say it you you often you sell out of food and I'll see you know before I before I get on my bike and I ride over to the cafe I check has anybody said we're all sold out see you tomorrow or something like that and one thing Mm -hmm. that I had not thought of when I started going to the cafe and started seeing that when you were talking about other restaurants and how there are people working really hard to keep the food whatever food that that their customers expect to be there to be there if they make so much food that there's extra, then there's food waste, right? So it seems to me like one mm-hmm. of the things you're changing is that there's not anywhere near as much food wasted because you're making enough to satisfy what you can do rather than what the customer necessarily expects. How, what What are your thoughts on that? I mean, that's that's pretty dead on. Like yeah, that was that was. That was an early conversation we all had Yeah, about wanting to reduce our food waste. For sure. For sure. And, you know, that being said, when Lars bakes, you know, she bakes in the morning and then, you know, there may not be croissants at five o'clock, but at least there's not a dozen croissants left over at the end of the day when, you know, most people eat a croissant for breakfast. But it, that is so true. We order the amount of food that we need. And that's it. There's hardly ever any extra. And if we do have extra bread at the end of the week, we donate it. So, and that's usually it, just some extra bread. Yeah. That's like kind of the only thing we ever have to donate. Yeah, for sure. You know, and 
I think, especially in a bakery setting, it's very uncommon. Like I think when people go to other, you know, and we're not just a bakery, but specifically in a bakery sense, like when people go to bakeries, they want everything all Mm -hmm. day long. And I'm like, what do you think happens at 6 p.m. when a full pastry case is there and then you close? Yeah. Most like most of the time, all those pastries just go over to the next day and you're just eating stale pastries for the same price as the day before. Yeah. And that was that was really big to Laura. It was like she really, really did not want to do that. She wanted everything fresh day of sell it out. And, you know, as speaking as a as a delighted customer, as well as as the person you're speaking to now, I love I do. I love that because I know that if I'm going to show up at the cafe, what's there is fresh. What's there is delicious. And I'm not worried about am I taking stale croissants to my friend's house or whatever. So I think that that's lovely and and also i'd love to find out from you when you are when you're in that place of making those decisions is it a consensus type thing do you all have to agree on this sort of decision or how do you how do you arrive at the decisions that that are really innovating the restaurant industry i'll just say it that way but how do you arrive at the decisions you know what we're gonna we're gonna only work 12 hours a day, which is, you know, by many people's standards, a lot, I have to say, or we're only going to make so much food uh, per day or whatever. How do you decide that? And what is the process, if you wouldn't mind going into that a little bit? Oh, I think it's, see, that question seems so intense, but from our point of view, it's so easy because we all so often agree on everything. Or if, um, for instance, somebody's in like one path and someone else will bring up oh, hey, what if we did that sort of thing this way? Or what if I took that off your plate? It's always kind of like, oh, yeah, no, that 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 does make sense. Um, so our decision making is very equal and even. And luckily, all of us have had so many similar experiences while working, like having to sell pastries day of and a customer or day old and a customer comes in and they're like, oh, I'm so excited. What should I get? And you're thinking to yourself, all of this is not prime. This is, this is just not good. You know what I mean? So it's like, we are all kind of in the same boat and luckily we're all trying to go in the same direction. And there's a lot of respect in our place. Um, Mm -hmm. We're all very qualified to be doing what we're doing. Yeah. um, As far as years in the industry goes. Uh, So there's just a lot of respect. Yeah. I feel like there's not a lot of, like, I think, I feel like I've heard other people kind of ask a similar question of us. It's like, how is your decision-making process? Like, what's it like? And I think people imagine that we're all sitting around constantly, like discussing every little detail, but it's more so like, it's just natural. Yeah, It's just really natural of all of us kind of wanting the same thing and not really diverging much from it. And even when there's, you know, like, okay, I thought of something. Like, it's just kind of, also our cafe is very small. (laughs) So like, you literally can just like be speaking loudly across the room. Yeah, we're all in the conversation together. (laughs) All of a sudden, you'll just be like, we'll be talking up front and you'll just hear a what from the back. (laughs) And it's like, oh yeah, I forgot you were in this conversation. Let me speak up. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. Uh, So you said we're all heading in the same direction. What direction is that? What is your vision, your collective vision for the cafe? Well, we signed a five-year lease. So we're like, (laughs) all right, we're getting through five years. Let's do this thing. (laughs) (laughs) That is definitely how we feel. And I, I, you know, I mean, bigger picture, I I hope other people people want to do things similarly yeah you know like I hope I feel like I've noticed that it's helping people make a better decision by coming to us you know for sure there's a lot of places I personally don't want to eat around Brooklyn Mm -hmm. for several different reasons Mm -hmm. and I feel like if I was separate from our cafe and I saw what we were doing and how we were doing it I'd be like oh yes yeah (laughs) I'm going to eat there all the time. Yeah. That that's sure. exactly what I do. So 
that that that's yeah. that's my that's my thought process. Oh, they're open. It's Thursday. They're open. Uh, let's go. You know. So, so that that idea of gaining fans. Do you do it? I mean, word of mouth because I tell everybody. Everybody I know. My my uh, my husband's cousin and her wife just moved in yesterday around the corner from you all and we're like you need to go to satan rising like as soon as they're open on thursday because because we're telling <laughs> i mean really i tell everybody i know so i feel a little bit like um maybe i'm not the best person to talk to you about this because i'm like hey i'm such a fan hi you know uh, but at the same time <laughs> i no it's it's true it's true because because uh i one of my missions in life is to is to show how we can innovate, particularly from a perspective of this power with instead of power over paradigm. So, so seeing you all in action mm -hmm. is just delightful for me. When, when you do that, when you tell people, when you are putting the word out, how do you do it? What are your, what are your processes for, for gaining attention for the cafe? We truly, uh, here's the thing, <laughs> before we opened our doors, all of us, all of us were yeah. like, no one's coming. No one's ever going to come in. No one's ever going to come in these doors. We're going to have to ramp up wholesale. Yeah. We're going to have to figure this out. We're only going to do wholesale. That was literally all of our thoughts. Like we had a million and one ideas of how to make money with not a single person walking in the door. And then we opened and everyone came. <laughs> <laughs> we were stunned. We actually had this conversation yesterday. We were like, how do these people know we're here? Like, this is so interesting. And I think a lot of it comes from, you know, the fact that we just started doing these random pop-ups, um, Pisces Rising and Satan's Helper. Uh, we both started around the same time. Mm -hmm. And back then, you know, you could go to pop-ups and have events. <laughs> and we just, you know, we were always showing up. And I think just that constant, you know, we're going to be here. Um I don't know. And Lars is really good at Instagram. Yeah, Lars is very, very, <laughs> ne neither of us do pretty much any of the social media. Yeah. It's all Lars. And she is, she, well, she studied photography for a little bit Yeah, mm -hmm. and really likes it. So her photos, gorgeous all yeah. the time, constantly, oh, sure. dear mm -hmm. God. Oh, for sure. Absol and I don't know, she's just, she's just really good at social media. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, you know, and I mean, it helps that you all have a great product. And, and I would love to talk about that, uh, you know, full disclosure to if, if you're listening to this, I'm vegan too. I, I never hide that. Uh, so, so everything in the cafe is vegan. And I wanted to find out from you, first of all, I, as I, as I've said, uh, I'm a transplant to New York. I just recently moved here and I'm, I feel a little bit like I'm in vegan Mecca now because there's so many different places that <laughs> focus on, on vegan food and, and, uh, and Satan rising of course is all vegan. So I would love to talk to you about what the thought behind that was about opening a vegan place, admittedly in a place where there are lots of vegans, or at least that can sustain restaurants that are vegan. Uh, how did you arrive at, at, that idea maybe it was with pisces rising or, or or with satan's helper i don't know but how did you arrive at that satan rising would be vegan and that would be the the sort of choices that you would be supporting and promoting we've all been vegan for a very long time <laughs> yeah. yeah um lars is a lifelong vegetarian vegan for forever now about 10 years yeah mm -hmm. christina how long have you been vegan? 10 years as well that's the only reason yeah. i know how long Lars has been vegan because yeah. we're about the same vegan age yeah uh -huh. and mm -hmm. i've been vegan for 15 so years uh -huh. and um cheyenne's been vegan for like five years now so the idea and before that we were all working pretty much in vegan environments um yeah. i've pretty much only worked one non-vegan job yeah the only non-vegan thing i've ever done was whole milk lattes but that's uh -huh. that's about it mm -hmm. um so there's no question that whatever we were doing was going to be vegan that's yeah. just you know that's the base ethics that all of us subscribe to mm -hmm. so I think it was just an easy, an easy thing. And we all wanted to see vegan food done well in a very like 
regular American cafe context, you know? Yeah. And then uh, like, you know, while you can be vegan, it does not mean you're an ethical person. Yeah, that's true. You know, and that, mm. that was something I learned very early on in my veganism is that I thought if somebody else was vegan, we are on the exact same page as people. Mm -hmm. Like we are both there. And I quickly found out it's not the case. You can still be vegan and sexist at the same time. I know. It's (laughs) it's surprising, but it's true. Hmm. Um, But yeah, we just wanted to create a place that we wanted to go to. Like a a place that was safe for everyone to come to, not feel like they were being judged or not feel any sort of way at all other than like, you know, here's your food. We love you. You're great. You know? And that's just, that's just all we wanted. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that answers the question properly, but (laughs) there are no wrong answers. Absolutely. No, the, 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 (laughs) the reason I'm asking, I mean, for me, I've, I became a vegetarian in 1987. So it was, it's been, you know, Ooh, a long time and, nice. and vegan since 2003, I guess. So it's been, yeah, it's been a different, while. Different time in veganism. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> very, it was very different back then. <laughs> absolutely. It's, it was all very different. I, I remember very clearly, I, I sustained myself with salads because there was really nothing else I could eat. Uh, and things are so yeah. different yeah. now. And that's why every time I get to go to a vegan restaurant, I, I do a little, you know, victory dance because yes, there are more people who are, sure. who are embracing this. So, but let me ask you when, when people come in, and I don't know if this, if you've ever had these conversations with customers, how often do non-vegans come in and go, oh, this is so good versus just your clientele is mostly vegan and, and you don't even think about it. I don't know if a lot of non, non-vegans out themselves. I it, it, Sometimes you like accidentally find out like a year later. Yeah. In my oh. experience that somebody's like, oh, by the way, I'm not vegan. And yeah. You're like, you've been coming here a while. Jeez, I thought you were <laughs> vegan this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I very rarely, um, I used to come to this conversation a lot where like non-vegans, but like that was before the cafe started. But I feel like now veganism, especially here in Bushwick, is so regular every day mm-hmm. that um, it just doesn't come up much about not being vegan. We don't have to, ex- like, I don't have to really explain to so many people anymore. I mean, I will say, I feel like, I feel like I can tell more now at the cafe when someone's not vegan, just because yeah they'll ask like what's seitan oh yeah <laughs> that's the question where you're like, yeah. oh okay okay all right, all right. Gotcha. i got you i got you <laughs> or i mean it doesn't necessarily mean they're not vegan yeah. it could also mean they're just really new yeah for sure right, for right. Sure. And, and they don't know you know that we have a friend who's been vegan for a while and just the other day we had him over for dinner and he was wait, this is vegan because we were we were serving him some of your uh, pepperoni and mortadella. Those are the two that we tend to buy a lot of. And he was like, this, nice. what, where is this place? You know, and he lives right around the corner from you all too in Bushwick. So so you, you'll have a new customer very shortly uh, starting this week. Oh, I love that. <laughs> you know, but, 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 oh, I, I, I sing your praises all the time. But, but yeah, and he's been vegan for a while, but he didn't know the possibilities. And so I, I don't know who, which of you mm-hmm. four, or is, if it's a combination of all of you, uh, who does the, it, it's innovative. The food is different. Like I remember right around Thanksgiving, you basically had Thanksgiving in a pastry, you know, it was <laughs> all the different things you might have, all the different flavors you might have in one pastry. And who, who, who oh, does that? God. Who does that? Mm-hmm. Who does your innovating? Who does the, I know what let's do, or is it a combination of all of you? It's sometimes it's separate. Sometimes it's a combination. Yeah. Lars is behind the Thanksgiving crack though. Oh yeah. That Thanksgiving <laughs> crack is all Lars. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, That's our, all of our favorite thing. That was amazing. We, my husband and I were like, we needed to get um, more of these. We, yeah. I, I think, you know, a Hello. Did we lose her? Nope. I'm, you said, I think we, and then I was waiting oh. for you to. Oh, keep... oh I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> sorry. I am so, so sorry. No um, worries. No worries at all. There was also someone outside the door. Um, 
And I completely got off track. Um, I know. What was we were, the we were, oh, we were yeah. <laughs> the innovation of the food. And you said Lars was behind the Thanksgiving. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Lars was behind the Thanksgiving crag. Crags are her, are her baby. But a lot of it is, you know, we all, I think, make really good food. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we come together on things, like, I know we'll be talking about, like, sandwich specials. And we'll be like, oh, we'll put this in this, you know. Oh, I feel like making this this week. And then someone else will be like, put French fried onions in it. And so I think it's just a combination of all of us, yeah. really. I mean, for pastry-wise, it's mostly just Lars. Yeah, it's for pretty sure. much like maybe like 0.0%, 0.01% yeah. somebody says something to Lars. Yeah. And then everything else is just yeah, Lars. Lars kind of makes just the food she wants to eat. She mm-hmm. honestly hates pastries. Mm-hmm. Huh. She is not a sweet person. She doesn't like she eat a lot of sweet things. Mm-hmm. She'll take like one bite of something mm-hmm. and then be like, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, Christina is the official taste tester because she loves pastries. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> eat everything. She will just take one bite and be like, I don't want this. You want oh, this? Wow. I'll be like, yes, I do want this. Yeah, they'd have to pull me off oh. the pastry. So that's that. Yeah, I'm 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 more with you, Christina. <laughs> so I it, one of my favorite things about listening to you to speak right now is I love the creative collaboration that seems to be a, a, a big part of what you do. And and I love that it sounds it sounds simple or easy for you all to keep in that flow. Have you ever had times when it wasn't easy? And if so, if you'd like to share, I'd love to hear it. I think the only times it becomes really hard is if we've all been working really hard days, long days where everything in our days went wrong. Mm. And it'll be like more of just like, you know what, we've been around each other, my love, for for very, very many hours. I I, I love you, but I am also very tired. And I think that's a big, um, I think that's the biggest, you know, problem we have, which is an excellent thing to say. But there's no one ever like arguing about something petty. Like if there's like a little miscommunication, it'll get ironed out. And that's what we always come back to. Yeah. I think we're all really good at be- at recognizing that like, okay, somebody's emotionally exhausted mm-hmm. and I'm going to give them space. Yep. You know, I'm going to just let them do their thing. I'm going to mm-hmm. do my thing. Yeah. And when we're both feeling better, we'll come back together. Yep. For sure. For sure. Our personalities work very well together. We're very, very lucky. Yeah. We're all pretty, like, emotionally open, Mm -hmm. too. You know, we're all not afraid to cry in front of each other. Oh, that's... (laughs) Or, like, have a tantrum. That's uh, that's uh, really lovely, actually, that that you feel safe to do that. And that brings me to uh, my next question. One of the things that... I think is highlighted by watching all of you work at the cafe is that it feels safe. The, 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 the space feels safe. And I'm wondering what, what that is in, in what you're trying to do and how you're doing that. How are you fostering safe space and queer space? in what you're doing and and maybe even letting it go out into the rest of the restaurant industry to help other people see that it's possible too. I think we all live very authentically. We talk about a lot about how awesome our bubble is and how we forget that other people don't get to have the experiences we have because we're all very queer, very queer. Yeah, We're all very vegan. (laughs) <laughs> we're all you know all of the varies like we're all like we all dress you know however we want and we all say whatever we want you know everything we can talk about you know and I think just by being ourselves we spread that because you know when you walk in we're, we don't have a script it's not like you know welcome to Mo's it's you know like yeah. hey what's going on oh hey so and so good to see you oh my gosh it's been so long you're yeah. so cute like it's just we get to be ourselves and we get to just talk to people on a 
people level. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I was a chef for a very long time and then was started working a counter job for a long time and like being a manager at a spot. And the thing that I realized I liked the most was I, I just like sh- shooting the shit with people. Yeah. You know, I like chatting with people. I like just, I want to hear about your day. Tell me about your day. Everyone else thinks it's boring. I don't care. All right, just, yeah, let's just like talk a little bit. And I think I realized that when I'm more genuine with people and not just in like a job sense, but like in a personal sense as well, like they give me their genuine self back. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. And, you know, it, it all boils down to, we want to create a place that we would go to and like, and not judge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, I also, I also feel like that's like a queer experience as well. Yeah. Is that, you know, so you spend a lot of your life suppressing and just being like, yeah, you know, not that this is everyone's experience, but you know, a lot of times you're just like, oh, I gotta hide me, I gotta suppress me, mm-hmm. and then when you get a taste of not doing that anymore, it's mm-hmm. golden. It's always the first time you shave your head too. <laughs> <laughs> pretty true (laughs) I moved and immediately shaved my head (laughs) what what's the what is what is the freedom with that for you I'd love to know if you would share oh for shaving your head Uh (laughs) uh-huh oh it's it's just everything I I mean I've been keeping my head shaved for um a few years now and the my, the main reason I shave my head now is because I do work in food and it's just so much easier not to have to worry about if there's food in here or if there's hair in your food mm-hmm. um but the first time I shaved my head I had had really long hair my whole life and it was like my growing up experience of like oh I I can do this this is something I can do like nobody's going to tell me I can't this is awesome. All right. I'm shaving my head. And then the first time you go outside and feel like the breeze on your skin, it's so refreshing. It is just so refreshing. Yeah. Highly recommend. If you're thinking about shaving your head, do it. I support you. <laughs> I agree. I, you know, my whole life had, you know, just long, yeah, I feel like we have similar hair types too. Just like long, thin hair, Yep. you know, and it just like always kind of looks whatever. Yeah. You know, and then I, I personally started cutting my own hair when I was like 15 because mm-hmm. my mother would not let me get the haircuts I wanted to get. Mm-hmm. And she was like, no, you're not cutting your hair short. That's ugly. <laughs> oh, wow. And uh, the moment, the moment I could shave my head as soon as I moved out of my parents' house, I was like, yep, goodbye. Look, go and buying clippers. <laughs> Doing that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's so, that's so wonderful. It sounds empowering. I have never shaved my head. I had short hair once when I was like nine and, Mm -hmm. and that's it. And I, I cut my own hair and it's interesting because it's never, you know, it's, it's the most basic cut, but I've never thought of now, now you have me curious about what that might be like. I I might have to do a spring. Right. The winter is not the time. I'm, I I don't like the cold. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But, I would wait. I have to wear a lot of hats and scarves. Right, right. And I, I, I just, I'm not sure about that for the winter, but maybe in the spring, uh, I'll come by the cafe and you'll be like, oh, you did it. That's really cool. Um, <laughs> oh, I'll be so happy. I'll hype you up so much. <laughs> awesome. I hilariously had a meeting last week with our accountants and one, our one accountant shaved, shaved their head. And I just hyped them up as much as I could. I was like, oh my God, Andrea, you look amazing. I <laughs> love it. I am about it. Oh my gosh. That's so phenomenal. I love it. Uh, I, I, it's, it's interesting, you know, like you said, oh, we met with our accountant. This is going to sound like a really strange thing to say, but it feels to me like this is a little bit, uh, that the cafe is kind of a fairy tale. Oh, it's this wonderful place that's all vegan that I can just go to and I can get my triple thread sandwich and my potato salad and da 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 da. Mm-hmm. But oh yeah, this is a business. <laughs> so I just sort of got mm-hmm. re- yeah. got reminded. So, so <laughs> right. Yeah. So so what is that like for you to to work on the business end of this? 
it's so boring. it's so it's the worst <laughs> part of it it, it really truly is. is like if we all could just not think about money and taxes that would be amazing that, that would be amazing. <laughs> right yeah. um so yeah uh, accounting we started off thinking that christina was very ambitious and she was like i'm gonna do this um, and we were all like, yeah, Christina, you got this. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can do QuickBooks. I can teach myself QuickBooks. And then very quickly, it was like, there's no time for QuickBooks. We need right. to, the, 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 we don't need a dishwasher. We can wash our own dishes. But what we need is help with numbers. <laughs> right. So, you know, we came to that really like tricky conversation of like, what do we, what, cause what do you spend money on? Like, you know, we're, we're very simple people. We don't need a lot of money ourselves. Um, but it's like, you know, what do you go and do that business expense? An accountant was the one thing we needed. Yeah, absolutely. And I love our accountants. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. They pretty much only work with co-ops and small businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, and it did take me a while to find, cause that was uh, to me very, very important to find accountants that were very in line with our values. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and understood that you know we're not trying to get rich mm -mm. we are oh god so far from it trying yeah. to get rich we are just trying to survive mm -hmm. and sustain ourselves yeah and sustain our business and I didn't really want an accountant that was going to be like you you can maximize your profits for doing xyz we're like no <laughs> just just do the taxes and tell us what to do please please <laughs> yeah i yeah, love we i mean we've been very we're just lucky yeah <laughs> yeah but you know i i, I want to say that i i disagree there i don't think i don't think it's just luck i think you're looking at it from a very thoughtful place and that's not luck. That is being thoughtful and being deliberate and being purposeful with what it is you're trying to achieve, you know? So, so I don't want to down, I don't want to downplay at all what you all are, are, have accomplished already and what you continue to accomplish day in and day out, because there's only a handful of worker owned cafes and restaurants to look to, sure. to, to find a model to do this. And so, so you're doing it and you, you know, you're in the first year of, of the five-year lease or whatever, but, but at the same time, you're, you know, you're feeling your way. I'm, I'm noticing that, but who, who, how, I don't even know if there's a question there. I just, I'm, I'm really curious and also inspired by the fact that you are worker owned and you're working this business while at the same time, staying authentic to who you are. So who, who are your guides, if you are using any, or is it just we're, you know, we're feeling our way as we go? Well, I also own, I, I also co-own another business. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, with my mom, we uh, make and we sell soap and we have a storefront here in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been doing that for the past, I don't know, almost so long. 20 years. <laughs> it wow. seems like so long. Um, so I have a lot of, you know, experience doing businessy stuff, except for numbers. I'm terrible at numbers. I also have an accountant for that business, but um, that's, you know, where I think I got my idea that, you know, I, you know, I could start Satan's Helper. This, this would be fine. Like I've, I've done this before, you know, I really love making food. Let's, let's do it again. And um, so I think that's, that was a big help for me to not be scared of starting mm. a business was like, I already have another business and that one's doing fine. And that one had its own troubles and I got through them. So like, let's just try this again and see what happens. And you might as well try because what else are you going to do? Just sit here and have all this Satan. Who are you going to give it to? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, for me, I just feel like I feel like when I started working places, I, I truly had rose-colored glasses. I was like, places love you. They mm -hmm. care about you because you care about them. Mm -hmm. and I was very quickly learned that is not true. They don't care about you. Mm -hmm. They will say they do. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, yeah, we care about you. And it's like at the end of the day, it's like, do you really? Do you really? Do you really know? Mm. I don't think so. And I remember I used to read this magazine. It, 
RIP no longer exists called Mm -hmm. Render. Well, it's about women and food. Mm -hmm. And in it, there was an article about a worker owned restaurant in Virginia. I cannot remember the name, uh, which always makes me sad. And I always have to like do a ton of digging to figure out the name of the restaurant. But um, it was just a place where the owners just disappeared. And all the workers were like, well, I I like my job. Do do you like your job? Let's just keep take it over, I guess. And wow, I read that when I was 19 and have never stopped thinking about that place and just being like, wow, you all like your jobs. And we're like, it's better that they're not here and that we can just now do what we want. And they all rotated positions too, Mm -hmm. which I thought was really interesting. I was like, wow, what would it be like to be at a place where every single person cared about it the same amount that you did? Yeah. That's the biggest thing. We all care the same amount. Yeah. Ah, I love that. And, and it sounds to me like the model itself is sustainable because obviously you're sustaining it. So here's, here's my question. If a new restaurant or a restaurant that was about to open or a cafe that was about to open came to you and said, what, what are the three biggest pieces of advice you could give me so that this could succeed so that my my cafe could succeed what would you say to someone who asked for your advice make sure your plumbing's right the first time yeah yep that Um, would be the biggest one (laughs) make sure all right everything like get like 10 plumbers yeah get like 10 (laughs) plumbers um but I think that's the most important lesson I've learned so far is um luckily now we have the most wonderful people who help us with electricity and plumbing and um, that sort of thing. But to begin with, we didn't have any of those contacts. So I mm-hmm. think I would be like, okay, the first thing you need to know is this is who you go to for extermination. This is who you go to <laughs> for this um, because they're the people who are going to help you. Uh, and it's just, I would say, make sure you all get along so well. Yeah. If there was a fire and everyone in that room was the people you work with, would you all be able to put out the fire together? Yeah, for sure. You know, like, would you all be like, or would someone just freeze? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, you're really getting along, like knowing yeah. you all get along and that you can have difficult conversations. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. That's important. No, oh, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I, the, I mean, that's, that's, that's good advice for relationships too. make, <laughs> make sure yeah. that yeah. make sure that you argue well together, that you can actually yes. have those discussions. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I would love to chat with you a little bit and we haven't really talked about we're you know, we're all three of us are vegan. You are everybody in who does the cafe is vegan. The values around that, uh, how much of that is uh how much of that is is related to like for me it's all about the animals like i mm-hmm. i'm course. vegan for the animals that's and for the yeah, earth 100%. but really for the animals so mm-hmm. so what what if anything are you thinking about with respect to the food that you prepare and and sell to your customers with respect to animal liberation animal welfare all of that what are your thoughts on that i mean my personal thought is you know there is no liberation for anyone without liberation for all yeah very true very true and and it's the whole idea of you know do no harm like i would not want someone to raise me and eat me so i'm not going to expect that of any other sentient being um and that just comes full circle of you know if we're gonna, if we're gonna do, if we're gonna take it to animals, we're gonna take it to people, we're gonna mm-hmm. take it to the environment. There's very little, I mean, it's not, nothing is black and white, but it's so easy to choose veganism because there are so many options. Yeah. You know? You know, I mean, you said you had gone vegan in the, the 87 it, or vegetarian in the 80s, vegan in the 2000s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, even going vegan 10 years ago, and I was in the middle of nowhere, Maryland, Mm -hmm. like, I could pretty much get nutritional yeast. Mm -hmm. um, And it took me a very long time to find the original Follow Your Heart cheese, which was Mm -hmm. terrible. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that was bad. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But 
it's just, you know, it's just so easy now. Yeah, it's so easy now. And it's such a good choice. I, everyone you ever talk to who's like, oh, yeah, I went vegan. I feel great. Like you, I never run into anybody who's like, oh, yeah, no, that that didn't take a load off my shoulders. Because mm-hmm. once you start eating plants and not, you know, animals, you just, you don't have that violence in you. And right. like, that sounds really corny, but there's, there's a little something to it where, you know, just making knowledgeable food choices. You're not just going and getting whatever you actually stopped and you were like, okay, what am I going to eat? Yeah. yeah. This is what I'm going to eat. So it's, you know, a little more like you're in the decision-making process of what you eat. For sure. And I also, I mean, my biggest thing I say to people is like, do you, you, at the end of the day, you still have to do what's right for you and your body. Mm -hmm. You know, I've definitely met people who they just cannot, you know, they cannot be vegan. Of course. Mm -hmm. You know, they have, you know, medical issues or like this and that, you know, at the end of the day, like you need to eat and you need to sustain your body and you need to listen to your body. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very important to listen to your body and what your body needs. And, you know, it is a privilege to be able to choose veganism. Very true statement right there. You know, not everyone has access to everything. Mm -hmm. Not everyone physically can do everything. Yeah. But a lot of people can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Absolutely. And it's interesting because, like, coming to Satan Rising and getting my favorite sandwich I love the triple thread I have to admit it Mm -hmm. uh you know to me every time we eat it there's there's you you take a bite and you go "Mm," because it tastes it's just so darn good uh and and what's interesting to me as far as the evolution of the availability of different kinds of food that are plant-based or plant-powered as I like to say uh so when you have that yeah, that's I, I, that's what I say. I don't. I'm not plant based. I'm plant powered. So, so when when I'm when we are in this place of looking to the future as as things evolve, what do you what would you want to see as far as uh, innovative food choices in in the vegan realm? Is there anything that you're like, oh, I'd love to see this happen? And if so, what is it? I think the thing I want to see is um, (laughs) different legislation regarding animal agriculture and the Mm. tax breaks that they get. Yeah. Because isn't that, you know, the root of everything? Broccoli doesn't cost more than raising an entire being to be slaughtered. But the broccoli does end up costing more because of the subsidies given to animal agriculture. Yeah. Mm. So if we start there, (laughs) then real food like real sustainable food can be enjoyed by so many more people yeah give access to a lot more people yeah and that's the whole thing money is access so Mm -hmm. making you know informed choices to make fruits and vegetables more obtainable and i mean that's the thing i would love to see most yeah that would be great gosh (laughs) milk dream milk gets so much so much yeah they don't pay anything yeah so and and i think you know i don't know no i I can't even think what i'd want to see anything yeah Yeah. any you know but i also i feel like everyday things are just very slowly changing Mm -hmm. you know the fact that we exist yeah that is a change in the vegan world um and more power to you, you know, I mean, that, that, <laughs> that to me is, again, I moved part, part of the reason I left Maryland also. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, beautiful day, were you ever there? Do you ever go to beautiful day in College Park or Berwyn Heights, Maryland? I, no, I don't oh. know beautiful day. It Lars, was, my, Lars is also from Northern Virginia. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's no longer around, but it was a, mm. a vegan, it was a little, it was a sort of a produce store for a long time and then it became a cafe all vegan and it was wonderful uh which was one of the only places back in 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 the 90s and the aughts that you could go and get vegan food in the area uh was it a co-op uh it was it was not mm, it the store was a co-op and then the store went out of business and then it became a restaurant owned by 
a couple who were really, really good uh, at at maintaining a paradigm of cooperation, but I don't think it itself was a co-op. Got but it. but it was it was a it was a wonderful place because it was one of the only places. And so that's and it's mm -hmm. interesting to me to hear what you're saying about uh, about anything. The fact that you exist is a big deal. I moved here in part because there would be more choices. I mm -hmm. you know that that to me is really important. And I remember well the days where I was like, I'll have lettuce and tomato, thank you, and that was my meal, <laughs> yeah. uh, because there really wasn't anything. And so so the innovation that you all are bringing is amazing to me. And it's and it's you know not only is it amazing, it's gratifying. It's like yes, it is possible. And so so I'm wondering now, what is possible for you as these next four and some odd years go? What is possible? Oh, oh wow. So what is possible? What is, um, <laughs> hmm. Honestly, I've been feeling a lot lately, like we can do whatever we want and be supported by our community. And I think that is a really, I don't know, freeing way to look at it of like we can like sky's the limit yeah. you know we've got people to back us up it's very obvious especially when people come back and they're like oh how how was your break it wasn't like oh you weren't open it was like how, how are you rested up this is awesome glad you're back oh, yeah that's a, yeah and so I feel like you know as time goes on we're just gonna keep making food and doing exactly what we want to do yeah if we can make it to five years that would be amazing yeah. that's my goal that's mine too <laughs> get five to the years. finish line yeah and, and not be in excruciating debt yeah right. yeah yeah right and and also not being in excruciating pain that's you know the mm. resting mm, true true resting is so important and it's funny because i am one of those people who at first i was like hey they're not you know i rode my bike over and i'm like i'm gonna get f oh they're not open. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it was really interesting. Christina, I think I saw you the next time I came in and you were like, yeah, we, you know, we were tired. We took a break and I went, duh. And so, it was, <laughs> you know, it was a, re it was an eye opening moment for me to hear you go, yeah, we're real people and we <laughs> work really hard. So, so that, you know, you've, you've changed my mind as far as, or maybe you've expanded my mind, not changed it, but nice. you've expanded my mind, you know, that it, that this is, that that makes all sorts of sense. And so now I check Instagram to make sure that you're open before I, before <laughs> I ride my bike over. But, but, but that's something that, that, that can happen if you see what i mean that that mm -hmm. that that sort of education of your customers of the people who go i want to go to the cafe let me double check and make sure they're open because this is the paradigm they work in and so i know you said lars is sort of the 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 social media guru for you but mm -hmm. what you know what are what are the what are the possible ways to that you might do that or that you already do that that you educate is it just people find out like i did or is there is there anything that you do to show your customers or your potential customers that this is a different way than they might be used to of of running a cafe i think uh transparency yes we're very we try to be extremely transparent about what we're going through what's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, sometimes people like to, you know, when people try to challenge us on like money, yeah, like pricing, tipping, mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like that. Um, we're very transparent back, you know, we're four people. We do not pay ourselves a lot at all. <laughs> We've, you know, our, we are trying to make our food accessible, you know, and trying to make everything a sustainable price for us and the community. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just being super transparent with people, like this is why things are priced this way. This is why we ask for tip. This is mm -hmm. why, this is why we're only open four days a week during a pandemic. During a pandemic. Yep. That's the other thing that we haven't even touched on. Yeah. <laughs> And I think another thing too is uh, Lars makes sure that when she's posting um, every now and again uh, and more frequently recently, I think she's been putting us in the photos, mm -hmm. um, like showing that, you know, 
hey, it really is the four of us. Here we are. Look at Christina. Look at how cute. Like she's in a MySpace photo. Mm. Um, <laughs> and I know a lot. She's like, hey, you know, please be kind. Wear your mask. We're just four people. And I think that when people read our Instagram, I feel like they get us a little bit more um, because Lars does take her time on captions to make sure, you know, we are the specials. This is what we're doing. Um, and there's a lot of explanation behind a lot of what we do. Yeah. You know, um, we do sell out quickly for things like pre-ordered Thanksgiving pies because, you know, we're not making 4,000 pies. We're only making this many pies. So I think we just try and explain it the best we can and stay yeah. transparent. It's really, uh, you know, I'll just say it. It's really different. It's really different than certainly what I was used to as far as my neighborhood cafe. And now that I see it, I'm like, absolutely. I'm totally on board. That makes complete sense. But at first I was like, wait, what? They're not, what? I wanted my, yeah. you know, and so, <laughs> oh so, so that, that moment of sort of, oh yeah, that's, you know, like you said, that you were four, you're four women and you're doing this and you've, and the thing is, it sounds like you've made choices to do that. And you said, yeah. as you said, during a pandemic, so those choices, how were they, how were they changed? How did the choices that you've made to run the cafe the way you're running it change during COVID? Oh, oh, well, we were supposed to open in April. Our first mm. meeting with our landlord was in the beginning of February. So right before, you know, it was even spoken about that the city might be shutting down because of a global virus. Mm. Um, but I think as soon as, you know, time went on, so the cafe was pushed back and we were like, okay, we're going to, we're going to give it a few months to wait. Um, to and see what happens. And then as time went on and time went on, none of us were working. Um, I was going into insane amounts of debt. And I was just like, you know, if we're going to do something, we're, we're going to do it. And we just got to figure out a way to make it safe. And so that's why obviously there's no indoor seating, but um, we, we don't just, even do outdoor seating. Yeah. And we don't even do outdoor seating because you know, everyone we believe should be, you know, taking their food to go and going home or going to like a safe spot away from other people. Um, but we just try and create, you know, we were trying to create this environment that you could come in and be really cozy and everyone could use the bathroom. Feel like you're at your house. Feel like you're at your house. Um, and now our main goal is just keeping our customers safe, making sure there's enough hand sanitizer for everyone. Mm -hmm. which is super weird. It's a very yeah. weird thing. I My goal is always like, you come in, you have a nice five minutes and you get out. Yeah. Right. You know, like yeah. I'm trying to make those five minutes wonderful and then you have to leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, that's always, I'm trying to be as quick as possible to get people in and out, you know, because I think I don't even, I don't even know if we ever, maybe we did think about to having it where people couldn't even come in. We did. But then we put so much work on the inside that we we're like, oh, it's such a bummer that no one would see it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it's wonderful. I love it. When every time I walk in, I'm like, yay, this this feels very it does feel very at home, which mm -hmm. which I which I love. But also, I mean, I have to say it this way, the environment when I walk in is is always open and friendly and i am so you know because often you'll get to a place and people just seem really hectic and harried and like get, mm -hmm. get in and get out and you're not doing that even if what you're trying to do is get in and get out that doesn't feel like it you know so you're doing something nice. really right because it feels Michael. like oh you <laughs> no seriously it feels like you could oh i could be here forever i don't need to be so i'm gonna get my stuff and i'm gonna go but I could yeah. be, you know, and there's there's something there's something very welcoming about about the way you've set up the cafe. And I'm frankly just glad <laughs> that you're, <laughs> you know, less than a mile bike ride away uh, from from my house. So I, 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 
I could keep you talking for the next six hours, but I know you have lives to get back to and you probably want to rest <laughs> up before before you hit the rest of the day. I, I did want to make sure that we get your social media and your website out there before I ask you my final question that I ask everybody who comes on the show. So what what is the website that you would like people to go to to find out more about the cafe? So it's uh, satanrising.com and it's Great. spelled S. E I T A N. Yes, <laughs> not Satan people... like like yes. A... yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and I will put that in the show notes. And then also your Instagram, which is the again, if you want to know about what's happening at the cafe, that's that's Lars's domain, and uh, it's also the way to find out whether or not your your favorite croissants have been sold out. So just <laughs> be aware that that's something to do. And what is what is the uh, Instagram handle for that? Satan rising. See, That's that was it. easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love we're, it. we're pretty easy to find. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you both, uh, Christina and Amanda. I really appreciate you, you taking the time to, to be here and to talk about the, it's such innovation. It's so wonderful. And, and to, to be completely selfish here, the food is amazing. So I love <laughs> I love that you're in my neighborhood and also that you're serving a community that I think needs you and benefits from you being there. So I'm really grateful that you're here and also that you took the time to be on the show today. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. We had so much fun. We've yeah. been really looking forward to this. Yeah, and you're you are a lovely customer as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> you you are definitely one of our faves. Oh, that's very sweet. I appreciate it. I'm I'm always like, "Hi, I'm so glad to be." So, be <laughs> and we love that. We're like, yeah. "Thank you. We're so glad you're here." Exactly. <laughs> Mutual admiration society. I love yes. it. Uh so I I want to I ask this question. It's a silly question, but it is one that often provides very poignant answers. And I would love it if you'd each answer it, if you don't mind. And mm -hmm. the question is this, if you had a, a plane that could skywrite anything for the whole world to see, what would you say? I love you, Cheyenne. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism is bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> very different answers i that's love it awesome. i feel like that's it's it's what i would I, that's what i would write to yeah. me both those answers are what the cafe is about yeah exactly. <laughs> we love cheyenne we love cheyenne so much and we hate capitalism yeah. <laughs> i love it that's fantastic and it's it's interesting i uh when when i walk into your cafe when i'm there it feels like uh like what you just said like there's a lot of love and that money itself is tertiary to anything mm -hmm. else you know it's like it's somewhere down the line rather yeah. than being the the <laughs> primary thing that you all are concerned with it feels like it feels like community it feels like kindness are the are the hallmarks of of the cafe and i love that you are there and providing that sort of community and that sort of outpouring of kindness to everybody who comes in and also of course to as far as i'm concerned to me it's always always important to the animals themselves that 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 the cafe is vegan so yeah. i'm grateful to all four of you for the work that you're doing to change our little corner of Brooklyn, but also the ripples of that will go further, I think. And so I'm really grateful for the work that you're doing. Thank you. And the next four and a half years will be amazing, I'm sure. Oh, thank I you hope so. so, so much. Thank you. This has been a lovely conversation. This has been really nice. Yeah. I'm super excited to go have a great day now because yeah. of this. Oh, yay. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad. So thanks again to Christina and Amanda for joining me on the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I am Isolde Trachtenberg, and I'm super grateful that you've been listening. If you want to find out more about Satan Rising and head over to the cafe in Bushwick, Brooklyn, New York City, go to S-E-I-T-A-N-R-I-S-I-N-G, satanrising.com, or follow them on Instagram at satanrising, same spelling. You will love the food. You will love these women. They're amazing. And you're going to get so much out of spending time in this little wonderful spot that's going to, I think, in, in many ways, change the world. 
Again, my name is Isolde Trachtenberg. I'd love to hear from you about things that you're thinking about and leave a review if you would subscribe to the show. Until next time, I'm reminding you to listen, learn, laugh, and love a whole lot. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new. And if you like what you're hearing, please review it and rate it and let other people know. And if you'd like to be a sponsor of the show, I'd love to meet you on patreon.com slash innovative mindset. I also have lots of exclusive goodies to share just with the show's supporters there. Today's episode was produced by Zolda Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results. Results, although we can always hope. Until next time, keep living in your innovative mindset.